It seems the gun industry has been infiltrated and that is being used as a tool against us. A former leader of an anti-gun group who was portrayed as suddenly pro-gun to me a couple years back has unsurprisingly gone back to his anti-freedom ways and is now using that to portray gun owners in a different way. We're going to break it down after this. Vertex makes some of the best EDC bags and gear around. Whether you're looking for a backpack, a messenger bag, or maybe something for your pup. They've got features like a rapid access weapon compartment, padded backing, a hot pull tab for quick access to the main compartment, and much, much more. Oh, and did I mention their jeans make my legs look better? <laughs> Seriously, I can do so many high kicks in these. And guys, if you wanna get a huge discount, head over to Vertex, that's V-E-R-T-X dot com, and use our code TGC to get a whopping 25% off everything. Go do it. Welcome back to The Gun Collective. My name is John Patton and you are watching The Fight for Gun Rights. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we put out multiple gun industry and gun rights news videos every single week and we'd love to have you back. Now, the issue of today. We have a thinly veiled intruder among us and I want to talk about why this matters. Back in November of 2019, I spoke at a pro-gun rally in D.C. on the Capitol lawn. Pretty cool. If you are up for it, go watch my speech. We have a video on it. At that very same rally were other speakers like Eric from Iraq Vet 8888, Tim from Military Arms Channel, Maj Toure, Chris Chang, Hickcock45, and a whole bunch of others. A group of speakers that in large part are very pro-gun and pro-freedom. Included in that group of speakers was a man named Dan Gross. He happens to be the former president of the Brady Campaign, one of the most anti-gun groups around. We were told that he was welcomed to speak by the organizers because he was quote-unquote on our side now and that he is a welcomed ally. Well, according to a recent article that he wrote in the New York Times, that was a lie. The lot of detective tests determined that was a lie. <laughs> Should have known, right? The article is titled, I Helped Lead the Gun Control Movement. It's asking the wrong questions, aka, hey, other anti-gunners, we need to change tactics. They are shifting to emotionally responsive messaging in a big way, and I'll try to explain how by breaking down one of the paragraphs from the article for you. It says, no decent human being. This is hugely manipulative because, of course, people want to feel like a decent person. So if you disagree with what he's about to say, you're not decent. Whether you're a gun owner or not, again, manipulative, insinuating that everyone agrees, wants to live in a country with our level of shooting deaths. No one wants to live here because we have a lot of those, right? That's what they're trying to say here. Because of the term shooting being in the front, this implies that the level of deaths from one person being shot by another is really high, but that's not true. And most deaths involving a firearm are from suicide. The most meaningful way to deal with the problem, suggesting that there is a problem stemming from guns, is not to look at how to keep certain guns from all people, he's telling anti-gunners not to go for an outright ban, but how to keep all guns from certain people. The people almost all of us agree should not have guns. This suggests that if you don't agree, then you are not part of the tribe that agrees about this. And that goes against a deep human behavior to be part of the tribe. The manipulation in that single paragraph alone is really thick. The article also states, although he agrees with an assault weapons ban, it's not the right path to gun control success. Gross goes on to state that he has spent the last two years building relationships in the gun rights community, and that he has found common ground with some folks. This is where dangerous thinking really ramps up. I'm only aware of one person that has openly aligned himself with Gross, and I'm not going to bother mentioning his name because he's a red flag law supporter and a charlatan. Whoever else he's supposedly partnered with or made relationships with should be concerned because of some of the points that Gross is trying to spread here. We'll go through the ones in the article. First, he says to vigorously pursue and prosecute the small percentage of gun dealers who are knowingly contributing to the illegal gun trade, a trade that is disproportionately hurting communities of color. To me, this could mean a couple things. It could mean the very basic enforce current laws, that sort of thing, you know, no illegal gun trafficking. But uh, 
I'm almost wondering if this is following the line of thought that former pro-gun group Firearms Owners Against Crime here in PA, which is that incomplete guns are being sold in large quantities to nefarious groups, and that some sort of ban on incomplete guns is in order to control that supposed crime. I'm trying to read between the lines on that. I'm not sure if that's the correct thinking, but it, it seems like that's the direction they might be heading. The next point is identify opportunities to strengthen the background check system by adding prohibited purchasers that we all, including 90% of gun owners, agree should not have guns. I'm not one of those 90% that they supposedly have in support. For instance, federal rules governing privacy for health records could be modified to allow health clinicians to identify those who are a threat to themselves or others so that they could temporarily be added to the National Instant Check System. This would have to include exemptions for private sales that may make some gun control supporters uncomfortable, but in the end, in combination with the other measures listed here, it would result in a significant improvement to public safety. That would mean that this is a public safety hazard to begin with, which it's not. This is incredibly dangerous. Giving doctors the control to red flag someone is something I'm simply not willing to accept, especially when we have programs like Hold My Guns. Imagine if you told your doctor you were having suicidal thoughts while you were having a rough time and then suddenly were barred from owning guns for the rest of your life. This is flat out unacceptable. The next point. Invest in a large-scale education and awareness campaign on the dangers of owning and carrying guns and what can be done to mitigate those dangers. It is crucial that these efforts be led in partnership with gun rights groups and public health experts and that they remain free from any judgment about gun ownership or connection with political advocacy. Good luck on that. There are many initiatives already, such as public education about the warning signs of mental illness and suicide, which have proved effective and could be models. It's like saying two different things. We want to focus on mental health, except guns. Guns are a problem, right? Like, no, the, the, they're separate, separate issues. To me, this says we need to ramp up spending to convince more people that the simple fact of owning or carrying a firearm is inherently dangerous, which is absolutely not true. Rather than focus on building a stronger mental health support system, this assumes that the issue is still the existence of a firearm. Also, this sort of harkens back to Biden's messaging about this being a public health issue. Firearms are not a public health issue. The fact that people are afraid to lose their gun rights over having a rough time, that's a public health issue. They're afraid to get help because of nonsense like this. Next is expand on the work of violence interrupters and similar programs proved to reduce gun violence in cities. This point furthers the application of public health issue being combined with firearms. They're putting the two together. The issue is largely a socioeconomic thing, but they want to slap the term public health against it, so it comes across differently to the undereducated, and people go, oh, well, I, I don't want to deal with a health issue. Let's fix that, right? No, it's not a health issue. And the last point, clearly define what it means to be a federally licensed firearm dealer with standards that include sales volume. For years, gun control groups have talked about closing the gun show loophole. The problem is not specifically gun shows, but people who are regularly selling multiple guns to strangers, regardless of the venue, without being required to conduct the same background check that a federally licensed dealer must. Not only does this clearly contribute to a straw man purchasing and gun trafficking setup, it also puts honest dealers at a competitive disadvantage as if dealers are, are suddenly losing business to individuals. No, shut up. That's ridiculous. To me, this point is trying to control gun-related commerce in a larger way, suggesting that there is a gun show loophole or an issue with private sales in general. This supposed problem has never actually been linked directly to large numbers of crime, but they keep beating that drum because it sounds scary and it's manipulating you and it's Supposedly working, I guess. I don't, I don't know if it's working. The biggest takeaways for me from this article were pretty straightforward. The attempts at gun control are evolving. People will be more afraid than ever to get help if their rights are at risk, and anti-gunners will say almost anything to try and mitigate their fear and desperation for control. All in all, having Dan Gross or other people like him suggesting to the public 
that they are an ally of the gun community is dodgy at best. It is our duty as stewards of the Second Amendment to remain open to conversation and closed off to compromise. We can move forward as a strong society, which is both vigilant and prepared, but also compassionate and considerate. Those things can and already do coexist. I am very curious to hear your thoughts on this stuff, guys. I really, really want to hear the conversation around this. Please do me a favor and post your opinions in the comment section below. And if you wouldn't mind, please share this video with a friend after you hit the like button. That'd be rad. Be sure to hit our secret affiliate link in the description because it helps support the channel. And that's fantastic because you're helping support what we do. And of course, don't forget to get subscribed. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon.